looking to build up your career or your business, many are now going online to do that using the site LinkedIn. It's got 78 million users. It's adding 1 million more every 10 days. We're joined not only by guest host Peter Thiel, who's here with me, but out in San Francisco, we welcome uh, the co-founder of LinkedIn, fellow PayPal alumnus, Reed Hoffman. And uh, Reed, I understand you and Peter have been friends since sophomore year of college. That's right. <laughs> It's been a while. Yeah, what is that like being uh, in <laughs> business uh, with a buddy? You guys ever fight? Uh, all the time and never. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, well, uh, Reed, uh, I, I want to have a broader conversation about social uh, media, social networking, but I got to ask you about uh, just the, the takeover that you had this week. You acquired Choice Vendor, which is a provider of online business ratings and reviews. Um, uh, tell me about this acquisition because I know the CEO of LinkedIn has said you, you've got more in the pipeline. What's the range you're looking at? Well, uh, the logic of the acquisition is very easy, that the um, one of the things that's important, uh, our primary customers on LinkedIn are every individual professional, and how do you help them be more effective in, in kind of searching out opportunities, business intelligence, uh, ways to do their jobs better, but also essentially finding services or providing services to companies are also very important. And Choice Vendor both had a set of kind of good technologies and some great technologists to help build out uh, the, the kind of the, the uh, applicability for LinkedIn for like finding great lawyers or you know other kinds of business services or helping companies represent themselves, and so uh, that was that was the that, that was the base logic of the acquisition. Mm -hmm. And the range there, five million dollars and or under. I mean, is that kind of the size of the bite you want to take right now? Well, I mean. Uh, all acquisitions, I think, are, are, are they're, they're not commodities. They're, the question is, what's the, uh, what's the best play for the company? And if we mm -hmm. found something that was substantial and large, uh, that we thought was the exact right strategic play, you can only you know, do one of those per year or every couple of years, we would do it. Uh, it's uh, much easier to do acquisitions of uh, small, you know, extremely talented teams because uh, those can uh, much more naturally fit in the company culture. And you know, part of succeeding in internet uh, companies is building really good products. And so that that uh, meshing of the product development into the culture is key. Okay, Peter, I'm. Yeah, jump in. Rita, you know, uh, you've been incredibly early in the whole uh, social networking. Uh, world uh, you know you had a company back in the late 90s you were involved in called social net you actually figured out the name for this whole category that uh, <laughs> people didn't hear about till uh, this last decade uh, where do you think we are in this phase you know we've disagreed on this in the past where I think we're sort of in the <laughs> late stage of social networking and social media you think we still have a long ways to go where, where do you think we are I still think we're in the early stages now um, I mean, part of what I think is interesting is usually when you make predictions of the future, it's sooner and stranger than you think. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that the way the internet is transforming our lives is just beginning. And on the social side, obviously, you know, you have these massive platforms now, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, you know, and others that are, that, are, that are becoming an essential part of the fabric of how we live and work. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, we still have major zones of, of expansion. I mean, consider mobility, right? So the whole notion of presence and locality and all the rest of that uh, you know obviously you know uh, Facebook and LinkedIn will be uh, key parts of this but I also think that there's now opportunity for new and interesting things so for example one of the investments that I made earlier this year was Shopkick which is uh, essentially doing location like shopping right mm -hmm. so like what happens when you actually meld the whole mobile world into going into retail experience and these you know everyone shops uh, the the possibility of doing massive um, massive uh, you know hundreds of millions of people in terms of uh, transforming their lives I think is still there I want to bring back in um bring us back to tech and bring back in Peter Thiel and Reed Hoffman who joins us uh, off location there in San Francisco. Guys, let's pick this up because we've been talking about social media. You're both prolific investors here, uh, angel investors. There's a big debate out there about the size of deals getting done and whether there is perhaps some collusion or whether there is some sort of pushback to uh, get seed deals to be smaller. Is there a bubble out there, Reed? Well, I do think that there is, uh, at the very least, a certain amount of froth and seed stage uh, investing. And so I think that, you know, we're seeing, 
you know, kind of pressure on valuations, uh, many more companies being financed than you, you know, might rationally expect. Uh, and so I think there are challenges there. Um, there was this reported, uh, apparently, you know, meeting at a restaurant uh, locally that <laughs> Angel um, Gate, you know, as I don't, it's jokingly called. Yeah, <laughs> Angel Gate, as it seems to be, it seems to be the tag on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I wasn't there, so um, you know, I, I'm only reading the same things that you're reading. <laughs> uh, yeah, Reed, I wasn't there either. Uh, I think the, uh, <laughs> I think one of the questions in investing is you always want to be both fundamental and contrarian. And there's a fundamental case that. Uh, the internet keeps growing and it expands to mobile technologies and so on. But what I don't see is what part of this is contrarian. I think it was very contrarian to be bullish on the internet 2002 to 2006 or 2007. Uh, it's much harder for me to see what part of this is not understood by a lot of people. And that's, uh, that's why uh, we've pulled back quite a bit on our incremental internet investing over the last yeah. year or two. Well, I think the key thing, I do think, I agree with your general thesis about fundamental and contrarian, although remember when um, KP and Sequoia did Google, you know, it was a very hot deal with hot buzz in the valley. And there are, if you're selective and you understand what the, what the fundamental trends are and, and the, the, essentially the category dominator in that trend, that can still be very valuable, even if a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, this space is, you know, the space is very heated or anything else. So, um, I would say that kind of my and you know our approach, since I you know work at Greylock now, is uh, is fundamentally to say, look, let's be very choiceful about what are the things that essentially get large in a category and ignore the the kind of the local effects of whether or not there's mm -hmm. you know uh, a bubble or a bubblet or froth or or those sorts of things, and just be you know. Uh, extremely diligent about like this is something that could actually be a platform a network um, you know a, a, a marketplace of substantial size um, to both of you gentlemen I want to ask a question I spoke to Cisco CEO John Chambers earlier today and he says he truly believes that the next wave of innovation in tech is going to come uh, from the consumer uh, via the internet that that's where the innovation push is going to come from then you talk to others who say it's going to be Apple and those who create the actual tools for consumption that are, are changing uh, the patterns of social media and the rest of technology. Who's leading who here? <laughs> I, I tend to think it's, 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 it's often not a good thing to think of this in terms of trends. I think it is best to think of it in terms of incredible companies that are built because every new company that's really valuable does something unique. Um, you know, you don't want to be operating a commodity business where you're doing the same thing as 20 other people are doing. By the time something is a well-known trend, I think uh, it's uh, it's not that great an investment. Reed, do you agree with that? I, I completely agree. I mean, basically, one of the things that's really interesting about, especially consumer internet investing, but I do think consumer internet uh, is going over to mobile, is transforming the enterprise, all these sorts of things. But what's interesting is, once a, uh, a, co a truly unique company, cr kind of a becomes the category, right? Like mm -hmm. there's there's basically, you know, there is, there is one thing for social networking, there's one thing for professional networking, you know, there's one thing for social games, uh, that's, you know, Zynga. So, you know, those are the things that I think actually, that that's what I think really happens, um, you know, in this pattern. Now, you know, I think some of it, to answer your question, some of it comes from, you know, a unique visionary, some of it comes from, you know, a, a, a really well-run company that kind of understands what a group of consumers need and creates a uh, a cycling effect as they iterate in that direction, but what you really need is a unique company with a unique product at massive scale. You know, another way to put this, the politically incorrect way to put this is it is a winner-take-all business to a degree that uh, investors very badly underestimate. They tend to think that you can have multiple companies doing uh, something well, and in, in the inter consumer internet, you're mm -hmm. basically dealing with something that's globally competitive, and uh, the people who do uh, best end up creating valuable global franchises and then companies two through uh, and tend to be worth a lot less than the leader. Reed, quick question to you before um, uh, we sign off here. I, I want to ask you, the trend I hear from private equity and from other VC guys out there is that the IPO is just not the choice way to monetize an asset right now. You mentioned you're at Greylock. Do you agree with that? 
not uh, almost certainly don't agree although the question is really much more of timing so I think it used to be that 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 getting the IPO was essential to get the capital it was a central marketing vehicle for the company so it was get there as soon as you can mm -hmm. I think what you're seeing right uh, right now from companies is is actually it's like no, no actually establish much more of the business create all the fundamental momentum uh, and inertia through a lot of different investment and then when you go out is when you're actually uh, have most of the you know the, the building the edifice more than, more than just the foundations built because you don't need the capital and you don't need the marketing event because consumer internet for companies for example you know basically do their own marketing and in some ways Google was the company that uh, set the uh, the role model for this they did not go public till they were at a very very late stage um, and I think uh, people are emulating uh, the uh, example Google set back in 2004 all right yeah, look how successful it's been <laughs> Uh, guys, we could do a whole hour here, another one. Um, but I got I to gotta sign off here uh, because we're actually running out of time. Reed, uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's been fun to have one of uh, a longtime friend of Peter's on here to do a joint conversation.